Welcome, my friends. This is Mary Copeland, and welcome to my YouTube channel, if you haven't joined me before. Uh, today, I'm going to do a gentle core and lengthening mat workout. So, um, some of you know me from classes. This will be uh, similar to other mat work I've done in the past. The emphasis today is uh, lengthening while we work deeply in the core. And we're also going to avoid doing um, major spinal movements. We're going to stay mostly in a neutral spine for those who don't know those terms. We have a natural curves in our spine to maintain healthily. So our lumbar spine, our lower back, and our cervical spines have a curve forward. Our thoracic, our chest, and pelvis go under. You can see this most easily if I do uh, a spine this way. So here's my lumbar curve, my cervical curve, right? So we're not going to be moving into any deep forward flexion. This is flexion. This is extension. We will be doing some mild flexion of the pelvis, doing pelvic tilts on the floor a la Pilates, uh, and we will be doing some extension. So know your limitations, know what's helpful for you to do and what's not and I can provide modifications. I will speak throughout this workout how much you need to move to get the benefit and how you can keep it small and still get benefits. All right, so um, I suggest if you have a dyna-band, uh, we're gonna use that basically for stretch today. And if you have some kind of ball in the house, I happen to have this uh, uh, old basketball. I, I prefer something softer, I just don't have anything in the house right now like that. Um, so, um, or you can also use a pillow, right? We're gonna use that for resistance between our knees uh, for the most part today. And um, at the Dynaband, we're going to use for resistance for stretching things like our hamstrings, our quadriceps, etc. So let's begin, I'm going to play some music. I'm keeping my phone uh, near me to adjust the volume because not all of my music, it, it's a mix. So they were recorded at different moments. I'm pausing because there's a siren going on behind me. Just hold on a second. I'm grateful there's not, they're not as often as they were, but we still get quite a few. So uh, sirens, that is. So um, let's begin. I'm going to start on our backs. Uh, I suggest everyone have a little something to elevate their head, most of us. If you're in my age range or beyond, um, most of us, gravity has taken our heads slightly forward and down from years of, of standing. So we want to have a little something to support the head. You can use a, a small pillow, a book. Um, I'm using this towel today that I folded over a few times, and I'm going to put the Dynaband to the side for now. We're going to start with some gentle release through the spine and the body. Actually, we're going to start sitting up today which I don't always do in my class. So um, let me turn on our music to get started. Here we go. We're just gonna make a little diamond with our legs, zipping and lifting through the body. I refer to that in terms of the belly button going into the spine, gliding up under the heart, making us nice and tall. We're going to drop the shoulders down, palms up as we and sit through your sits bones and lengthen. Sit and reach. Up 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 and reach. Now we're going to take a little curve to the side. Notice my hand is forward by my knee, elbow softened. I support myself still lifting, lengthening, dropping all the way down through the pelvis and up again. Other side, take it up and over the reach. So you should feel the stretch all the way down through the ribs and waist. Again, only move as much as is comfortable for you or is safe for your spine. And lift. Lots of breath. Big breath in. And exhale. And inhale again to return. Good. Now we're going to add a little rotation, just a gentle rotation over to the side. Rotate. 
rotate your chest toward that knee. Uh, reaching arm is below the shoulders, so below the head and shoulder. Reaching across. So now the stretch wraps around my lower pelvis a little more. And come center. Just a gentle supported curve here. And inhale, roll up. Make it up and over other side. And gently rotate. Three shoulder drops. Lengthen away from this opposite hip. Come center. Breathe into the upper back. Exhale, soften. Inhale, roll up, 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 up. Good. And now we're going to come to our back. Make sure your head is on your support. Still nice space under the neck. So we don't want the support under the neck so much as the skull. So we're going to draw the knees up. Inhale here. Exhale and hug. Inhale, release. Exhale, hug. Feel your shoulder blades widening, your pelvis widening, the muscles along the spine nice and free and easy. Just easy breath in and out without pressure, right? We don't want to be blowing like you're trying to fill up a big, heavy, thick balloon, right? Just gentle, flowing pressure of the breath, flowing movement of the breath. And now we're going to rock side to side. Nice and easy, rolling across the back. Releasing those muscles along the spine. Good. And we flex the feet, reach up, and just a little wiggle, wiggle, wiggle here. Just releasing those hip sockets. And now fold. Now we're going to rest. I notice my feet are just dangling toward my butt. Buttocks. My hands on my knees. Now my hands are going to control my movement in the leg as I glide one leg in, one leg out. We're doing this to relax our hip sockets. So we also want to think about relaxing our mouth and jaw while we do this. Just sliding, gliding, free hip sockets. Many of us hold a lot of tension in the hips. So we want to release this before we start our work. Good. And hands down. We place one foot down, the other foot down. Notice my feet are forward of my knees, but parallel. I'm going to take the ball and put it between my knees here. Keep those feet parallel. Now I'm using my inner thigh muscles right away to keep that ball in place. Like I said, this is a little heavier ball than I would ordinarily like to use. It's got a little more weight to it, and it's not as soft. So, um, again, feel free to use a pillow for this. So, we're engaging the inner thighs. We're going to work our pelvic floor muscles also before we do our pelvic tilt. So, those are the band of muscles that go from your pubic bone back to your rectum, and all our openings are in there. We're going to squeeze those openings shut. Lift them up inside the cavity of the pelvis. So as we inhale here, we're in our neutral spine, space under the lower back. As we exhale, we squeeze, scoot, and tilt, lengthening the lower back down, and your pubic bone tips to the ceiling. Inhale, return to neutral. Exhale, squeeze, scoop, and tilt. Inhale, release. Exhale, squeeze, scoop, and tilt. Inhale, release. Exhale, squeeze, scoop, and tilt. Nice dropping into the pelvis. Exhale, squeeze, scoop, and tilt. Just the bones are rocking in the pelvis. Exhale, so we're massaging our lower back muscles, and we're also helping to hydrate the discs between the vertebrae, right? Exhale, scoop, and tilt. And we're trying to use... Just the belly, inner thigh, and pelvic floor, not the buttocks. It's relaxed. Inhale. I'm going to turn this down a hair. This is a little louder song. Okay. Exhale, scoop and tilt. Inhale, release. Exhale, scoop and tilt. Inhale, release. Now we're going to take it into a slight lift. Exhale, scoop, tilt, lift about two inches off the floor. And roll back down where you came from. Exhale, scoop, tilt, lift. And roll back down. As I lift, I keep my chest relaxed, my shoulder blades widening. Exhale, scoop, tilt, lift. Roll down again. Exhale, scoop, tilt, lift. Roll down through the spine. 
Exhale, scoop, jump, lift, staying low. We're going to hover right here, squeeze that ball in and in. So as you squeeze, you're going to feel your buttocks muscles engage even more. And of course, every time you've lifted your pelvis, your buttocks and hamstrings have had to work quite hard. In, 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 and roll down. Now we're going to do a four count roll up, a little higher this time. Again, only if it's safe for your spine. You can stay at the same level I was just now or go up higher with me right now. Two, and up, and up. Notice my pelvis is much higher. Roll down. One vertebrae at a time. Three, turn. Exhale and scoop. Rolling off the floor. And roll down. 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 Breathe here. Exhale. Roll. Two. Three. Inhale on four. Exhale. Down. 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 Inhale on four. Exhale. Roll. Up. 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 And come down. 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 Good. Last time up, and then we're going to stay up here at our height with our pelvis belly still pulling in while the buttocks is pressing up. We've got those opposable energies working. Press. You should start to feel your hamstrings now. Back of the thighs. Press. 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 And slowly roll down. Good. Take the ball, put it aside. Let the knees fall open like butterfly wings. And just relax those inner thighs a bit. And gently bring those knees up, hug one and then the other. Again, our side to side roll. And center, reach those heels up, walk them, gentle glide, reaching out through those hamstrings. So if your legs are here, just support them a little bit as you glide, right? If, that, if that's how tight you are in the back of the thighs. We're all different in that category. Soften the knees again and hug. Now we're going to bring our knees to what we call a tabletop position. The knee is directly over the hip socket. The shins are parallel to the ceiling. We're going to maintain our neutral spine, tightening the belly. I'm going to turn this down just a hair again. Now, as we exhale and tighten, we float one foot away from the body and inhale, return. Exhale, touch and return. This is a core stabilization exercise. So I want you to think of the tummy pulling into the spine without pressing the back down. No tension in the chest. Exhale, touch, return. Exhale, touch. Nice free neck, neutral spine. Return. Exhale. If you feel any stress in your back muscles at all, you need to pull your tummy in more, first of all. And perhaps if this is not very conditioned for you right now, don't move the leg all the way down. Just move it partly down, right? And we also want to keep that opposite knee over the hip as you move. As soon as you let both knees go away from you, you're going to cause stress in the back. So let's try that modification. if. You need to not move so deeply, right? Move just that much, right? But every time you exhale, think belly button to backbone. It all drops in. Tummy drops in, back, in. You will feel your thighs a little bit. Touch. Good. So you can do a full movement. If this is a piece of cake for you, so to speak, you can touch your heel. That makes it harder. Exhale. Exhale, touch. Exhale, touch, exhale, touch, and come in and hug those knees, rock side to side. Now, we're going to plant both feet again. Good. Now, we're going to slide one leg out, flex that foot, reach the, up, the same arm as leg. So, it's, um, this is my left side I'm stretching. This may be what you visualize as my right side for you in the uh, camera. So we're reaching, my thumb is pointing to the floor, my pinky to the ceiling, pulling my shoulder blade down around and under, and I'm just gonna think about reaching. So instead of being soft here, I'm gonna reach with energy out through my heel, out through my hand, and zip and lift my belly again. Reach, 
Inhale, soften. Exhale, reach. Tighten all those muscles up the front of your thigh. Release. Exhale, reach and lengthen. Just do that one side. My opposite pelvis is heavy on the floor as is my shoulder blade. Nice, relaxed neck. Exhale, coming in. Release. Good. Now I'm going to bring my arm back down where it was. We're going to do low leg lifts with this leg, continuing to work our core and working the top of the thigh as we go. We're going to point our foot, toes point down as you lift. Flex it, toes point up as you lower. Exhale up, up, inhale down. Down, exhale, lift. Keep lengthening that leg out of your hip socket. Reach and up. And lower. Exhale, reach up. Inhale, lower. Exhale, reach up. And lower. Exhale, reach up. And lower. One more. Exhale up. Lower. Down, down, down. Good. Relax that leg. Relax your hip socket. Slide it in. Good. Slide your other leg out. We're going to take our other arm back. Now, if you have shoulder issues, I'm going to show you on this side so you can see more easily. You can tuck your hand under your shoulder blade and just pull the elbow back without having as much weight and stress on the shoulder socket, right? So you want to reach if you have to tuck under. And if it still hurts to do that, just keep your arm down and do it with the leg, right? That's totally fine, right? You don't get quite the sense of pull through the torso, but you can still imagine it cinching together and zipping as you exhale. Reach, reach, exhale, reach and lengthen. And soften as you inhale. Exhale, reach and lengthen. And soften. Nice, easy neck. Neutral spine. Reach. Soften. Exhale, reach. And soften. Exhale, reach. And soften. Good. Bring that arm back down. Point that foot. Here we go. Our leg lifts. Up. Flex and lower. Point and lift. I'm lengthening that leg out of my hip socket. All those muscles in my thigh are engaged on the top of the thigh and quadriceps. I'm zipping and lifting through my core and my belly. Reach. Lower down. Exhale. Reach. And lower down. Exhale. Reach. Lower down. Exhale, reach, still zipping and lifting. Let's do two more. Exhale, reach out. Flex and lower, pelvis is steady. Exhale up, lower down. Good, release that hip. Slide the leg in, hug one leg up, hug the other leg up. Rock side to side. Good, I'm gonna roll on my side to face you. And we're going to flip over onto our abdominals onto our belly. Now, um, I'm going to move the towel aside because we're going to start with an exercise called Sphinx, and then um, we, will, we may use the towel for under our forehead in a little while. So first we come down on our forearms, a la a Sphinx, right? So this is similar to cat and cow in yoga in that you will be moving your spine into a small amount of flexion and extension, as I mentioned what they were in the beginning. So we push down through those elbows, pelvis is on the floor. We're going to inhale, lift, and lengthen the chest forward up and through as you pull your shoulder blades down along your backside. As you exhale, you initiate the movement in your belly, pulling your belly button into the spine, floating your lower back up to the ceiling. I'm still pushing out of my elbows and shoulder blades. Slowly lower the pelvis down as you inhale. Come forward, up and through. Exhale, zip that belly up, lengthen up, 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 up. You're going to feel a lot of work across your belly and lower ribs. It's like a mini plank right here, right? Lower the pelvis down. Inhale, come forward, up and through. Exhale, zip and lift, press and up. And lower down, come forward, up and through. Exhale, zip and lift. Lower down, come forward, up and through. 
and one more. Exhale, zip, lift up, up, up. And we lower the pelvis, come forward, up and through. Now we're going to straighten the arms to move into a deeper extension of the spine, which is like a back bend, right? If this is as far as you can go, just stay there. I can push up with my hands here. If you have less range of motion than someone like me, you can slide your hands forward and push up. Right, that's what that would look like if I keep them here. This is what it looks like into a deeper extension in those, that lumbar spine. And notice I'm not collapsing in my shoulders. I'm keeping them away from my ears. Elegant long neck. Just breathe into the stretch. Feel the stretch across your abdominal muscles. And gently lower down. We're going to stack our hands on top of each other. Forehead down and just rest a moment. Now we're going to bring our legs together, keeping the forehead down on top of your hands. If that bothers your hands and your shoulders, you can take your towel, put it, I'm going to fold it up a little more, so it's under your forehead and you can have your hands by your side. So that's a perfectly reasonable uh, alternative. But first watch. We're going to keep our pelvis down on the floor, keep our belly zipped up into the back as we reach one leg out and lower. Other leg reaches and lower. Now I use the word reach rather than lift because I want you to think of your toes pulling across the room, not up, up to the ceiling, right? We want to keep the pelvis on the floor. Here we go. We're going to alternate legs. Reach, lower, reach it out. Lower down. You're going to feel the muscles in the hamstrings and up the buttocks. And perhaps some of the lower back as well. Exhale out. Inhale, return. Exhale, reach. And lower. Exhale, reach. Lower. Exhale, reach. And lower. Exhale, reach. And lower. Exhale, reach. And lower, exhale, reach, and lower, exhale, reach, and lower. Keep going, and reach, keep that pelvis down. Keep your knees nice and tight so your quadriceps are supporting your knees, but the hamstrings, the back of the thigh, are lifting the leg and the buttocks. Down, let's do two more. Reach, and lower, and reach. And lower. Good. Relax those legs. Excellent. Now we're going to do one more four-part exercise. Um, this is one of my favorites. It gets to pretty much the whole back side of the body from the head all the way down to your toes. So uh, we're going to um, actually we can keep this here for our return position when we come back down. So parts one and two, everyone is capable of doing. Parts three and four are optional. So um, our starting position is our palms down, hands are right below the shoulders, elbows are tucked in, feet are together, knees pointing to the floor. Part one is an isometric squeeze of the buttocks and legs. That's part one. Part two, float the elbows off and Squeeze the shoulder blades together, right? They're retracting as the elbows reach for the hips. Part three, float the face off, just low, not a big face lift. I'm still looking toward the floor. Part four is lifting the legs, right? So again, part one, squeeze the button thighs. Part two, squeeze the shoulder blades. Part three, lift the face. Part four is the feet. So. Parts one and two, we're all gonna do three and four as optional. And then we're going to hold the position and continue to breathe in and out in our hold, held position. Okay, let's try that. Here we go. Squeezing butt and thigh, shoulder blades, float the head, float the legs, and stay and breathe. And I'm thinking about lengthening my head and my feet out away from each other, like I'm a big, beautiful bow or bow that you would shoot a bow and arrow with. Keep reaching and lengthening, reach and lengthen. So we're isometrically squeezing all these muscles. 
as we lower down, tuck the forehead under and just breathe and relax and relax the left leg. We're going to do it three more times. Here we go. Legs, shoulder blades, and feet and hold. And lengthen. Think about getting longer and longer as you hold. Squeezing and lengthening. Squeezing and lengthening. And lower down again. Release, release. Take a couple nice full breaths here. And again, squeeze the legs and butt, arms, head, feet, legs, and up. Long, long screws from the throat down through your pelvis, backside, lengthen up and through out the back of your head. All these energy lines moving together. And lower down, tuck your forehead under. Relax in a moment, and we're going to do it one more time. Here we go. Squeeze. Squeeze your shoulder blades. Head and legs, and stay, and breathe, and lengthen. See if you can make yourself taller and longer. Keep the breath moving. And gently lower down. Relax. Good. Now we're going to go into child pose, the yoga child pose. And only fold as much as your knees or spine is willing. So I'm going to bring my knees under me, sit back on my heels. Some people don't have that much flexion. You might only come this far and support yourself. You can stack your hands and support yourself this way. So if you're in a partial child pose, or if you're like me and more flexible, bring your towel with you to put under your forehead. And just breathe and relax. Try to fold deeply at the knees and hips. Fill your back up with breath. Your lower back, your shoulder blades. Just imagine you're a big balloon inflating. And then you empty and soften. And fill up inflating your whole back. And soften. And inhale, we're gonna roll up through the spine. All right, good, excellent. Now, we're going to do some work on the side of our body, working through here, still working the core. All right, are we ready? Good, we're gonna come down on our side. I want you to line yourself up. If you have a mat, you're gonna line yourself up with the back of the mat. I'm going to fold this up even more to make a nice pillow for my head so I'm in a neutral spine lined up at the back of my mat. I'm going to stretch my legs down. I'm in one long line. Hand stabilizes here. Now I'm going to pike my legs forward, folding at my hip sockets to the front corner of my mat. Hand is here for support. I'm going to give you two versions of this exercise. We're going to do um, the uh, less challenging version first, right? This is our warm up. So we're going to lift the top leg, and then the bottom leg comes up to meet it, and lower, lower. So it's up, up, down, down. Here we go. First, zip, lift, and support through the belly. Reach, just to hip level. Lift, lower down, and down. Let's do it this tempo again. Up, up, lower down, and down. Now a little faster. Up, up, lower. Keep zipping and lifting. Now a common problem in this exercise is rolling back onto your buttocks. Stay right on the side of your hip as best you can, as long as there's no pain. Some people have tender bones on the sides of their pelvis. You might want to put a towel under your pelvis. Reach, reach, reach. Now the other thing I want you to think about, just everybody try this with me, hook your hand on the crest of your pelvis, feel the bones, top of the bone, and think of pulling it away from your ribs. Right now, try it. Because we want to really work these muscles along the ribs and waistline. That's more challenging. If you need the support for the balance, that's fine. Now here's the second part of this exercise, the more challenging part. Lifting both legs together. Now, again, you want to think of reaching your feet across the room, not going up to the ceiling. Think of reaching out to go up. 
and then they will automatically float up. Reach, pull that belly in, pull these hips out, lengthen, reach. You should feel lots of action through the side. You're also getting inner thigh work of that underneath leg. Tons of core, reach, 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 and soften. Good, bend those knees forward, just relax those hips. Good. Now, we're going to do a classic clamshell exercise, which is for deep in the buttocks and hip. So for that, you can either, again, if you have shoulder issues or neck issues, you can stay down here to do it. Or if you want to come up on the elbow. So again, you get to work side core here. You can do that. The knees are not up at 90 degrees to the hips. They're in a little more open position. The feet are back. We want to lift up out of that waistline and rotate and lower. Let the ankle and foot and calf relax of that opening leg so you're not helping to lift the leg with those muscles. That foot is very passive, resting on the other foot. You want all the work to be coming from what I call the tetanus shot position, right? Right in the deep butt muscles, right? Still have memories of childhood of getting that big shot when I was a little girl. And press, right? Now, if you're having trouble feeling it, you can add pressure with your hand as you lift, right? Sometimes it takes people a few repetitions before they start to feel that work, right? And press, and lower, and press, and lower, and keep lifting through this waist. You want to watch you're not collapsing in your shoulder. Up, stay lifted. Up, so again, we're working this side core, and I'm zipping and lifting my belly. And release, and press. And release, and press, and release, and press, and release. Good. I'm going to push up, stretch forward, cross this leg over, the one I just worked, and I'm going to hug it with the opposite arm, put the other hand, I'm going to turn to the side so you can see diagonally. Hug, lift, press down, and chest to the knee. And keep lifting, keep getting taller, so I'm getting a nice stretch in my hips. Watch that you don't lift your buttocks off the floor. Keep it dropping down and keep lengthening and turning your face. Lengthening, lengthening, lengthening. And release it open. Good. Now we're going to do everything on the other side. So we start with our straight leg exercise. We've got the towel under our head. Our spine is at the back edge of the mat. Legs are stretched out. And then we pike at the hip sockets to the front corner of the mat. Hands supporting you. Zip that belly up. Pull that hip away. Here we go. We reach. We're going to start slow. Reach. Lower down. And down. Lengthen those legs out of the hip socket. And up. Lower down. And down. Here we go. Up to tempo. Reach. Reach. Down. This leg doesn't need to lift above the hip level. Down. Keep pulling that hip out. Let's see if I can do it. Woo! Step and lift. Pull that hip out. And reach. Remember, try not to roll back in the pelvis. Reach. Reach. Lower. Lower. Lengthen that leg out of the hip socket. Down. Down. Reach out. Out, down, down, out, out, good, one more, out, out, now we're going to do both legs reaching out across the room, lengthen, lengthen, reach, keep trying to pull that hip out, feel all this work deep in the core, I feel it all around my ribs as well, reach, Exhale, lengthening. Keep those quadriceps front of the thigh supporting your knees. Reach. Exhale, reach. Try not to create tension in your underneath shoulder. That happens sometimes. Reach. Try to put it here. All that effort. Up and come down. Good. Bend those knees. Rub it out. Excellent. Good. 
And now we're going to do our clamshell. So again, the knees are slightly below uh, the belly line, right? And feet are back. So if you're in the, the position here on the floor, this is what it looks like, right? And again, we have to emphasize that we're not rolling our pelvis back to do this, right? You're working in the socket, in that tetanus shot position. Open and close. Open and close. Good. I'm going to show you the version up on the elbow, lifted through. And again, if you need to feel it more, you could use the hand on the thigh. Dyna bands are great to do with this exercise to get a deeper workout as well. You tie them around the thighs, and then you've got pressure on both sides of the hips. As you open, stay lifted. I have to remind myself, stay lifted and long through both sides of the waist. Head is supported, right? Open and close. Deep in the hips. Way back here. Open and close. Relaxing the calf and foot as you do this. So all the work's being generated from deep inside the buttocks. Open and open and one more. And bend those knees forward and push up. Now, the hip we just worked, that's the crossover leg. We cross it over. Again, I'll show you from the side. I'm going to hug with the opposite arm and lift my chest against that. Hand is placed down behind the buttocks. Lift the chest to hug and feel that stretch. Don't roll off. Drop that hip down. Relax it around and through, around, through, and under. Chest up, 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 up. Nice, easy breath. Just let it flow through you. Keep lengthening, getting taller, getting taller. And release. Good. Wiggle those legs. Let's stretch. So, have your head support. My diaphragm is nearby. We're going to start with the same knees to the chest, rolling we did at the beginning of class, hugging up, rocking side to side. Nice and easy. Good. Let's start with a hip stretch. So I'm going to place one foot down, cross the ankle of my opposite leg. Let me show you this way. I'm crossed over, right? Now from this position, you want your shoulder blades relaxed, your spine neutral, we're going to take, I have the foot that you have on the floor, that same arm is going to slide through, and oh, actually I'm giving you the wrong information, sorry, you're going to take the opposite one that slide under the underneath leg, so you can either hold on from underneath, or you can hold on top of the shin if you don't have any knee problems, so we're going to hug deep, so here we're getting a deep stretch through those same hip and buttocks muscles that we stretched sitting up, right? Now we're going to hug and relax. Relax our mouse and jaw again because we're trying to make the hip socket relax. And just nice easy breath. And if you want to take a little deeper stretch, you can roll slightly to the side. So I'm rolling away from the crossed over leg. And that deepens the stretch. If that is intolerable for you, for some people it is, you can just stay centered like this as opposed to rolling away, right? So do what feels best for you, right? You have to ease yourself into stretches if you're not used to stretching. And gently come back center. Now there are people who don't have this kind of range of motion and you may have to keep your underneath leg down and just use both hands for support to stretch the leg towards your chest. That happens if you've had um, any kind of deterioration in the hips or if you've had a hip replacement and you're not supposed to flex so fully. Those are all considerations. So know that there are always ways to modify this, right? Let's do the other side. We're going to cross the other foot over, let that knee fall open. Take the opposite hand and hug up. I like to hold on top of my shin. I get a little more leverage because I am one of the more stretchy people. But I certainly feel this deep in my buttocks. We did a lot of work that 
engage the buttocks muscles today. So um, from our pelvic lifts on, the, on our backs to all the work we did facing down on the floor, right? All that prone work. And I'm going to roll slightly toward the camera, away from my opposite hip. Oh, I feel it. Gently roll back to center again. Breathing and lengthening. And release. Good. Unfold that leg. Now we're going to grab our Dynaband. If you don't have a Dynaband, you can use a towel or a tie. Anything that's long enough that you can wrap it around your foot and reach the leg straight. So I'm going to put my foot in the middle, my, the ball of my foot in the center of my dynamo. Soften the hip socket first, and then reach that heel up toward the ceiling. Now, I'm pretty stretchy, right? I've got a big range of motion. Some of you will be way down here, because to get your knees straight, your hamstrings are quite tight. So, go where you have to be. Think of relaxing the pelvis. I don't want you to roll your pelvis off. Okay, let me turn this down a bit. This is a more lively song. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Oh, that got changed. That's okay. I'll stick with that for now. And draw that leg towards your chest. I'm shortening the band. You can see because I have more range of motion, I can reach way up almost to my foot. And you want to feel heavy in the pelvis. Don't pull off. Relax both hip sockets. Feel like your hip is sliding and gliding. The thigh bone sliding, gliding in the hip socket. If you want to slide your other leg down, that is optional, but only if it doesn't cause any back stress. All right, so we're reaching and lengthening, opening up, not just the back of the thigh, but I'm getting a calf stretch all the way out through my foot, because the fascia is a continuous line through the whole, through the foot, the calf, back of the knee, into the buttocks. And reach, I'm reaching up the opposite leg as well. Nice, easy breathing. And when you're stretching on your own, it's advisable to hold your stretch for at least 30 seconds if you can tolerate it. If it's too much to do in a continuous amount, you would ease up on the stretch, say hold it for 10 seconds, and then draw it closer to your chest again for another 10 seconds, working your way up to 30 seconds. It's important for true improvement in your range of motion and agility and, and stretch. Right? because it takes that long for the muscles to release on a deeper level. So physical therapists recommend 30 to 90 seconds to make lasting change in your stretch and soften that knee. So I'm not holding it for as long here just because it's the context of a class and I want to keep moving through to give you as much information as possible. Release that hip socket on the next leg. We're going to put or a stretch, you know, if you've got a yoga strap, anything you can use to leverage the stretch on the back of that leg. And notice my foot is fully flexed, my heel is reaching for the sky, my knee is straight, and I'm feeling that stretch from the back of my buttocks all the way up through my foot. Softening that hip socket, heavy pelvis on the floor, soften your mouth and jaw. You may slide your other leg down if that's comfortable for you. Again, as long as it doesn't stress the back and even steady pressure on that leg. Bouncing is not helpful for the muscles. It can cause little muscle tears, which will lead to even more tightness. So we want even steady pressure on the muscle. Nice, easy breath. And imagine, visualize the muscles lengthening and releasing from your sits bone all the way out through the back of the heel. And soften and release. Good. And now I'm putting the band down. We're going to bring both knees up, let the knees fall open to the side. Reach the hands between the thighs and grab your heels or ankles and pull your feet so they're over your pubic bone. 
I'm using my elbows to wedge open my inner thighs for a little inner thigh stretch. And again, breathe and release, relaxing the mouth and jaw, opening the inner thighs. And release, good. I'm going to roll to face the camera again. And this time we're going to stretch our quadriceps, the front of the thigh. Now, if you've got more range of motion like I do, you can slide your hand down to your foot and swing your thigh back. So from the side, I'm going to show you my knee is in line with my hip socket and my pelvis, right, and my foot's behind. For those of you that are tighter in the quadriceps and cannot pull your heels so close to your buttocks, you can use your Dynaband or towel, put it around the ankle, and then bring the leg back so you're not in as compressed a position in the knee socket, right? We want to keep all our joints happy while we're stretching the front of the thigh. Now, as you're stretching, you do need to continue to tighten your belly and lengthen through the front of the hip. Holding and breathing in this one. And release it. Good. Now I'm going to roll away from the camera so you can see me from the back as I do this stretch. So I'm going to use my band again around the ankle. My foot is behind me. My shoulders relax. I'm pressing my pelvis forward, tightening my belly as I stretch. And depending on your knee health, you can keep this heel as far or as close to the buttocks as you wish to get your stretch in your thigh. But we do not want to feel stress in the knee while we do this. Breathing and lengthening. going to come onto our backs, head supported, release. We're going to do a final guided relaxation. I'm going to turn off the music. And just lying on the floor, head supported, arms hanging out of the shoulder sockets, thighs dangling out of the hip sockets, and feel your beautiful neutral spine, the head heavy on the floor, a lovely space at the back of the neck, shoulder blades gliding off the spine, gliding away from each other, upper back is on the floor, ribs on the floor, and then you have this lovely space at the lower back, and then you meet the pelvis, that big funnel that is the pelvis where so many of our organs rest. And the pelvis creates the hip sockets. So the thighs are just falling open from the hip sockets, nice and free. Space under the knees, calves round and full against the floor, space under the ankles and the heels heavy and toes floating toward the ceiling. And we just want to take a slow, deep breath into the full body, filling yourself up like inflating a balloon. And as you let that air go out of you, softening gently, surrendering to gravity, surrendering to the floor, to the full support of the floor. Include your face, even your skin is surrendering, just letting everything go. And as you breathe at your own tempo, just notice if there's any special holding places still going on. And if you notice that, without criticism, please, just send a little breath that direction to that part of your body and encourage it sweetly to let go and surrender. Letting your body feel heavy, falling on the floor, resting, being completely supported, trusting in that support, allowing ourselves time to heal and replenish and renew. 
I recommend doing this every day, giving yourselves a few minutes, even if it's just five minutes, to lengthen along the floor, allowing gravity to decompress the spine, decompress all our joints, not just the spine, but every joint, surrendering ourselves to gravity, just letting ourselves be without doing. That can be a challenge for many of us. We are very busy people, but it's, sometimes it's nice to just give yourself permission to stop. And here we are, I'm giving you full permission to just stop and be. Thank you, my friends, for joining me today. I'm going to slide one heel in and the other roll onto my side. Inhale to come up. It's always a good idea to inhale as you change positions for your head so you don't get dizzy. All right, until we meet again, we will continue this relationship, I hope. So check out my other videos on Mary Coulter's channel and please Subscribe to my channel as well. There's no fee involved in that. And I will be sending out regular emails. If you're not on my email list, you can send me a comment uh, through YouTube, and I can add you to my email list. Uh, but I believe if you're a subscriber, you will automatically get notifications of, of new emails, of new videos, excuse me. And I also, you'll notice on my channel that I also have children's videos because I'm an early child good movement and music teacher. I've been doing that a long, long time. So uh, if you have any youngsters in your life or family members with younger children, please pass the word along for them to enjoy. It's a lot of fun. It's music and imagination and moving. All those things children need to develop and grow. So we as adults also need to develop and grow. And I hope the imaging that I give during our workout is also helpful to you. Thank you. Take care, be safe, and stay healthy. Until next time.